Hello AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School and we're going to be taking a look at a video that's going to introduce the ideas of topic 8.12 from the AP Calculus course and exam description. This is still a Calculus AB idea, but we are introducing it here in BC because of our situation with coronavirus. So what we're going to be looking at is our example one, which is using the washer method in order to find the volume of a solid of revolution. But we're going to change things up and we are going to rotate around an axis other than the x-axis, which is pretty much the peak of the difficulty level for this kind of idea. So if we move on to our notes and we pretty much see that uh, um, there's one example here that's going to focus on that very idea that says to find the volume of the solid formed by revolving this region bounded by the graphs y equal x squared plus 1. And you'll notice I have gone ahead and sketched those for you in the notes. At this point, I kind of figured that you were getting pretty used to graphing some of these mundane functions. So let's get right to it so that we can throw the graph at you and let you set up the uh, volume. But just to kind of iterate here, the blue graph is uh, corresponding to the equation that's underlined in blue. The y equals zero is just the x-axis or the red graph. And the green graph is the uh, y-axis characterized by x equals zero. And then that x equal one is, oh, I don't know, can I get a brown underline here? I'll try. x equal one would be the brown graph. Now what I don't have entered into the picture is the shading. So I am going to go ahead and, and do that shading because it's going to become very important for us to see that this is the region that's enclosed by all four of those aforementioned equations. It's really important that we have the right shaded region. And then it says that we're going to revolve around the line x equal negative 1. Well, if we find where x equal negative 1 is, we'll notice that that is this vertical line right over here. That is your x equal negative 1. So for our setup, what we're going to have to do is think about how the rectangles are going to be drawn. And so the very initial thing that you're going to consider is the fact that your rectangles will always emanate from the axis of revolution. So in this particular case, that would be this dashed line. So I'll scroll this up a little bit so we can see. And I'm going to go ahead and draw that first representative rectangle. I'm going to choose to do so down here all the way to the farthest edge of that yellow shaded region. And that's going to serve as your capital R. Now we're going to think about the lowercase r, which is the next radius value or the next representative rectangle drawn from the axis of revolution to the nearest side. So it would look something like that. Now, I need us to see that there is an issue here. In this particular problem, the purple rectangle and the light blue rectangle won't always be connecting the same two equations. Now what do I mean by that? Well as far as the purple rectangle is concerned I'm pretty sure that that's always going to start from the axis of revolution and go to the line x equal 1. No matter if we place it down here or if it were to have moved up here we always see that it's the right side minus the left side being consistent. However, I don't think that we can say the same thing about the blue rectangle because for a while it looks like it's the y-axis minus the negative one, but by the time it's up here, then you can kind of see that it's going to be more of the curve of the parabola minus the negative one. So it, you see how it changes and that's pretty tricky sometimes. And what that's going to mean is that we're going to have to set this up using two separate integrals. So I'm going to put a partition line right about here, which is going to show you where we have to make that change. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call this region here volume number one, and let's call that region volume number two. And so therefore, the overall setup would be our volume of our entire region is going to be 
volume one plus volume two. And therefore, we're going to have to basically set up two separate Vs. So volume one. Volume one, as we know from the washer method setup, is going to start with a pi with an integration. And then we're going to take an R of Y, capital R of Y, minus lowercase r of Y approach to this. So the capital R of Y would indeed be the entire length of that purple rectangle, right side minus left side. So in that particular case, the right side is the equation 1, right? x equal 1. And then the left side is the equation negative 1. So if you do that subtraction, it's probably not a mystery that you're going to get 2. And I think I'm going to actually put even more parentheses around here so that I can square that. right? But everybody would agree if you look very closely at that purple rectangle, it's got a length of 2 right? Everywhere where it's going to be placed. Now we would subtract the quantity of the lowercase r. Now that would be this light blue rectangle here. And we see that right minus left for him is going to be a 0 minus negative 1, which of course is positive 1, which does indeed depict what that actual volume, or I'm sorry, what that actual length is going to be. Now notice the setup is with respect to y. Right, because all of these rectangles are going to be drawn horizontally. So we're talking about delta y lengths or distances there. And then the boundaries of integration must also be y values, which in this case would go from 0 to 1. Now, notice if a student messed that up and thought that they were x boundaries, you get the same answer, 0 to 1. But I don't think that that's going to be true when we get to volume number 2. Okay. Now, um, we're going to go ahead and solve this, and you're going to notice something. By the time we simplify this, get that boundary right, we see that we're just dealing with 2 squared, which is 4, minus 1 squared, which is 1. So really, you're just integrating 3. OK, well, that seems pretty simple. So we pull that off. The antiderivative of 3 is 3y. Three Notice that there's still a pi in front. And by the time we plug in our boundaries from 1 to 0, we're going to get 3 times pi. 3 times pi will be the volume for that particular shape. Okay. Now we're going to set up V2. Now V2 is going to be maybe a little bit trickier, but maybe not by much. Now for V2, I'm going to use another purple rectangle just to emphasize the fact that we are going to be looking at essentially the same thing. This would be our capital R. Now it's this blue rectangle that we talked about that's going to be different. Notice what he does. He will emanate, start from the axis of revolution, but he will go to the nearest edge of that yellow shaded region, which is denoted by the blue curve, the dark blue curve. So when we set up this integral, we have our pi, we have our boundary, we'll put our integrals in in a second. And the first purple rectangle there, right minus left, no mystery, is 1 minus negative 1 once again. But then when we subtract the little r, here's where things change. Notice our equation, y equal x squared plus 1. We cannot place the x squared plus 1. It's not going to work for us because it's in terms of x. So I'm going to have to go off to the side here, take that equation, and I'm going to have to solve it for x, which means I'll first subtract 1, and then I'll take the square root of both sides, which you know what happens there, right? It brings about that plus or minus sign. Now that plus or minus sign sometimes can be a little tricky because you know it, it, we don't really want it to be in this problem. Sometimes we don't know how to deal with it in these problems, but it turns out that we don't want the plus and minus because whenever you're dealing with this particular part of the graph, you know that your x values are always positive. So you can disregard temporarily that little minus sign and just use positive square root of y minus 1. Now when we do that, we would have this, and then we would subtract. And then we have our negative 1, as I said before, 
all quantities squared with respect to y. Now, if we want to clean this up a little bit in hopes of integrating it. Oh, and by the way, I forgot the boundaries. Let's take care of that. The boundaries of this shaded region start here at positive 1 and end at 2 as far as the y values are concerned. So you want to go from 1 to 2 there. Now let's clean up this integral a little bit. 1 minus negative 1 is 2. Squared is 4, of course. And then I really don't know what more to do about this other than to maybe just take the double negative as a positive. And I'm a little bit hesitant to square that and foil that out because this is the kind of problem that I'm going to say you would be able to use a calculator for. It's not that you don't have the ability to integrate that. You could. It's not all that terrible. But I want the focus to be more on the setup. Okay, So we're going to switch over to the TI Inspire and we're going to go ahead and um, take care of that integral. So here we go. We're at the TI Inspire scratch pad calculator screen, and I believe that I've entered that particular integral in correctly. And we're going to hit enter, and we see the result is, drum roll please, 7 pi over 6. So that's the volume of, of that region that we kind of denoted V2 that is going to be revolved. Now we'll go back to the other document, add those two together, and we'll have our final answer. So we're going to go ahead and state that our answer here was 7 pi over 6. That's our V2. And so then we'll put it all together. And V uh, overall would be the 3 pi that we had before plus 7 pi divided by 6. And I guess if we wanted to simplify that, we'd have to get a common denominator of 6. And so the 3 pi would be an 18 pi add to 7 pi. And overall, we would have 25 pi over 6. And I suppose that would be the route one would take if this were a multiple choice question. Although this is a pretty tough multiple choice question. There are a lot of layers to it. Um, it's likely that that may not be the case. Um, and in other words, we probably want to give you guys some partial credit for a problem that was this robust and it more likely would be seen as a free response. But anyhow, that is how you handle your first washer method where the axis of revolution is something other than, say, the x-axis or the y-axis. Anyway, I hope this helps, and we'll see you at the next video.